Hello everybody, it's Laura Husband here from Hairdressers Journal International and I'm here this morning with Ken West and we're going to be talking about how to prepare for when the client rush is over, which some of you might already be experiencing. You might have had that backlog of clients who were desperate for that hair appointment and now as time is moving forward you might be seeing those spots starting to appear in your schedules. So we're going to be speaking to salon business coach Ken West from Salon Hair Education at 365 um, to explain and share his expert hints and tips for what to do when that lull is over. So it's great to have you with us again, Ken. And I have to say, you're back by popular demand. And the last session we had, everybody was saying, we need another session with you. So fantastic that um, you've been able to join us again. So thank you very much for that. Pleasure. Um, So I guess, Ken, I mean, shall we just kick off with, um, are are your members noticing that they're starting to have these free slots appear now in their appointment schedules from having that big backlog? Uh, Yes, they are slightly. I mean, okay, you know, I'm lucky in that the salons that we work with, with 365, because they spend a lot of time focusing on their business, not just, you know, the the product that they produce. Um, They are, they tend to be very busy and Mm -hmm. and busier salons, but but there's a vast difference between the salons and, and and I'm noticing, and I think I said to you before, I'm already noticing when I go out into the marketplace, <clears throat> when I just walk around, that there are salons that are not as busy as they were two or three weeks ago. Um, yeah. And certain sectors as well. I've noticed barbers uh, are already becoming quieter. And we'll talk about that maybe more in a moment because it's the sort of business that they've got that's important to understand. What I am noticing is there's, there's kind of two sorts of salons at the moment. You've got the salon that's blessed with space. Yeah. Um, so therefore, social distancing hasn't been an issue for them. Mm-hmm. So therefore, um, they can still put through the same volume of guests that they were putting through before lockdown. Right. Yeah. Um, so what will happen with them is they will kind of get to the end of this build up quicker. Yeah. Because yeah. they can service more customers. Um, what we're seeing uh, with salons, those smaller salons, the small, salons that have got smaller teams, so therefore even they, they're restricted by space, so they can only use a certain number of chairs, so it restricts the services they do, or they're operating shifts, so therefore they can't generate the same number of guests. They will take longer to get through this backlog. Now, right. in, a, in the our industry, if we say, we call it, I hate the word unisex, but you know what I mean. Yeah, a salon that yeah. predominantly deals with, because the unisex salon uh, still tends to be predominantly female, female in its yeah. client base. Um, you've got to realise that you've got customers there. The average in the industry at the moment is about 10 weeks, mm-hmm. um, between eight and 10 weeks turnover. So you will gradually get through those people. And once you've got through them, um, you know, that's when it will start to tail off. The barbering industry, men come far more frequently. So the, the average guy nowadays in a, in a barber shop will go every, say, four weeks uh, yeah. because of the styles that they're having now, because of the fade-ins and all that sort of thing. Some guys go even uh, more frequently than that. They'll go every two weeks. Um, so it's very easy. Once you've had two weeks of intensity or four weeks of intensity, mm-hmm. you're just back to the norm. Yes. So yeah. they will get through their backlog much, much mm-hmm. quicker. Um, the other thing is that once we, there, there's, and I think we covered this before, there's business that we will never get back because we've been closed for so long. All we're doing is in that period of time, a client, it, it would say in a unisex sound, a client would have probably had two visits and in a barber's they'll have had more, but we've lost that visit that we can't now do, if that makes sense, because well, we won't yeah. get, they won't, if they were due to have three haircuts, in the 15, 16 weeks yeah. we, were, we were in lockdown, they only need one haircut now. So we've yeah. still lost those lost mm-hmm. those two visits. And certainly with colours, if you've got a colour guest that's coming every, say, four weeks, there's two of those visits that you have lost. Mm-hmm. So although they're all packing in now, you've still got to realise that those two visits that you've lost, you, they're not needed now, they're done. Yeah. So the income from those will never come back to you. Mm-hmm. So the intensity of, of, of income that you've got at the moment will average out. 
and it's very easy to get swept up into the excitement. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing salons saying they're having unbelievable days, yeah. days like they've never seen before, weeks like they've never seen before. It's like Christmas. But someone said, one of the members said to me um, last week, I think it was, he said, uh, he said, I'm getting concerned, he said, because uh, I know that after every Christmas, there's a January. Yes. And that's, I guess that's the point, isn't it? It is the point. Yeah. And what also will have happened, and, and I don't I don't wish this to sound um, um, negative in any way, no. because all I want to do is is make people think about this, because we can fight this. We, we can there's things we can do about it. And we'll come to that in a moment. Mm. But you've got to be realistic. You've got to be realistic. Uh, and I, so I don't wish to be negative. But we've also got those clients that have now realized that they don't maybe have to come as frequently as they did because they got through it. Yeah. The customers that yep. there's some customers that will never have their hair colored again because they've gone, do you know what? I've got this far. I'm going to grow it out. We're, I think we're going to see a lot more 50, 60 year old women gray than we used to see because mm -hmm. they will have let it grow out. I bet there are sales now where the clients are coming in and going, well, look, I've got a regrowth that this long. So give me short hair, cut off the color and I'll start with <laughs> start okay. again. Yeah. Because yeah. they've also gone, we've got to be realistic with this. They've also gone, well, I've saved a lot of money and do I need to spend that? Mm. Their lives are uncertain. What's happening with them is uncertain. And you have to be realistic about that. You know, we discussed before the people that have now gone, well, I've done a reasonably good job with box color. I'm going to stay with that. My partner, for example, uh, and I hate to say this, has gone, I don't know why I want to go back to the salon because the experience in the salon when she had her hair done wasn't that good. Okay, she's lucky she's got me, but yeah. I've never done it at home before and I've never wanted to do it at home. I cut it, but I never color it. Yeah. But we've both gone, hey, look, this is, she won't go back. That's the challenge. Yeah. Now, had the salon that she was going to provided a better experience in the first place. So therefore, she wasn't just going to have her hair colored. Now, this is where salons have got to focus yeah. on how we work with clients in the future. If a customer is coming to you for a haircut or for a root tint, mm -hmm. something that they can easily do or simply do themselves, then they won't come back to you. If they're coming back to you because when they come back to you, they love the experience. There's something so much more than that. If they're just coming for the haircut, they can get that anywhere. So if that's what you were doing, they will either buy on price, and we talk about the guest that buys on price. Yep. So they're always looking for the offer. Um, and please be make sure we get in today about pricing because it, it's it's really important because those customers will go for the offer. If they've realized now that the experience wasn't good enough, then they'll search the price. Yeah. And there's always someone cheap down the road. So salons have really got to focus on, on what they deliver to people. So, yeah, go on. Um, if you've got a loyal client that has come back to you, yeah. what's your advice then for making sure that, A, they've absolutely loved that experience and they're desperate to come back in again, and B, getting them, making sure that you've got them booked in for their next appointment and their one after that to ensure that you do fill those slots moving forward. Okay, well, firstly, let's look at the experience. The experience that we can deliver at the moment is not as good as the one we used to be able to deliver because of some of the restrictions. Let's think about the fact that, that you know, we're supposed to only serve water. Now, mm -hmm. I've seen other salons, you know, I've seen salons sneaking in doing coffees and things like that, and, and it's gradually coming back in and, and, and maybe that will be relaxed, but, uh, there are certain things that we can't now do that were part of our experience. So where we've got to um, create a new experience is instead of the experience of, of luxury and treat, which maybe we can't do, we've got to create a new experience that's based around safety and security and professionalism. Mm -hmm. Clients now want to know that they're safe. They want to know that you are absolutely doing everything that you have to do to take care of them and your team. Yeah. They, they will love the fact that you're treating them right. They will love the fact that you're treating your team right. Um, and we've already, we're getting feedback from customers of our members saying, uh, we feel so safe when you're in your salon. 
Mm. Uh, we can see what you're doing. So the fact that we can't wow them with the cup of coffee and the, you know, the magazines and things like that. Yeah. We've got to wow them with how we are now stepping up to the game in the situation we're in now. So these sellers that are cutting corners, people will notice that. They will notice. I walked past a barber's the other day and I saw it was at night. They were closed. And I yeah. saw a gown hanging over the chair. Mm. So I immediately thought, because I'm, you're used to seeing that when you go past barbers. Yeah. They hang yeah. a gown over the chair because they use it the next day and they give it a shake and away you go. Barbers yeah. have never been... Or I won't say barbers have never been. A lot of barbers have never been that uh, conscious about cleanliness between guests. You know, they put a broom round, they and they shake the gown, and back it goes on. So I walked past this salon and I thought, why is that gown there? Mm. Uh, because I, and I actually would go, oh, I'm not going in that salon because why is that gown been there overnight? Why is it not being sterilized Beans, and cleansed? Yeah, and yeah. don't tell me it's out there ready for the next day yeah. because I want to see the next day one coming out, out of a I, sealed bag yeah. um uh, so i don't want to see that i don't want to walk into mm -hmm. a sound and see the gown laying over and and i think people will start to see those things we're seeing salons that aren't wearing visors now they're wearing masks instead now that's not the regulations the regulations state that you should wear a visor if you want to wear a mask as well a face covering as well then fine but there's a reason whether we agree with it or not, Laura, this is the thing, whether yeah. we agree with it or not. And, and many people go, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. Don't fight things that you can't fix. No, that's very the, true. The recommendations are that we wear visors. So yeah. wear visors. Well, actually, Ken, that's um, great because we've got a few people that are tuning in. Uh, it's great to see you tuning in live. And obviously, if you are busy working away in the salon, you can always tune in after as well. So we want to hear your questions. And um, Caroline Flynn has said that she can completely relate to what you've been saying, which is fantastic. And Tony Puccio, which I think this links in a lot to what we're talking about at the moment, Ken, um, he says he's finding some mature clients are still scared to come in. And I guess a lot of salons might have those loyal, mature clients that would come in quite regularly yeah. that are still too nervous to step foot back in the salon. They are. They are. And um, um, I'm, I'm going to bear my soul here now. I'm, I'm yeah. extremely old. Uh, I'm 68 and I've taken up later in life uh, bowls, um, mm. outdoor green bowling. And we're just getting back into that. But a lot of our members are still not coming out. Mm -hmm. They're scared to go out. So I can relate to that. You know, we're trying to get things going uh, and, and it's hard to get people involved again. Um, so there are customers that, that are still scared to come out. But the more they see you do, um, one of the things I, I saw something uh, the other day, my partner Jane was, was looking at. Oh, that's right. No, it was yeah. with her hockey club. She's a chairman of a hockey club and they're putting together a video because normally this time of year they will be recruiting for new members. Right. Now they yeah. can't do that. They can't have their open day to recruit for new members. So they're putting together a video. Now, I didn't like to say to her, well, that's what we did in sounds because then she gets upset with me. Yeah. Like, it's my task. Um, but, yeah, we've already done that, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but the good salons and remember, some will do it properly and some won't. The good salons will have produced nicely made short, brief videos of exactly what they were putting in place in their salon. And if I had an elderly client, I would somehow want to reassure them. I'd say, look, this is what we're doing. This is how you will be safe. How can we make you feel safe? Yeah. Um, and, and even if you've got, you've got to look at some of these people as well. We tend to forget sometimes that the that the older guests can often be our real high ticket guests. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've um, got. I mean, a lot of them they've do got have a lot disposable of money income. To spend. Yeah, correct. The silver pound is yeah. worth just as much as the pink pound. Okay? Yeah. So, and they've got the prime as well. So, it's correct. Amazing. Yeah. Now, uh, there's there's a, there could be, and I'm not suggesting this for everyone to go and do, mm -hmm. but if if as, as Tony's saying, he's, he's he's asking about that, and he's focusing on that. Yeah. Just why not say, well, okay, what we will do. We will open at a specific time and we will only serve one or two guests. If they're high ticket yeah. guests and you want to keep them yeah. and go, well, OK, if you want to come in at this time, which is, you know, when normally we close, we'll stay open an hour just to do you. And that's just to... definitely. And I guess as we start and um, as we're talking about the rush 
but you know getting to the point where the rush is over then that's even more important isn't it if you've got a free spot anyway get dedicate that time to those clients that are too nervous to come back and give them a vip yeah they could be you know some salons could create a vip space um i I, if i think back to i remember one of the first salons i ever worked in when i was like this big Mm. and um, we had we had rooms we had little rooms not just booths they had doors on so we had vip rooms mm. um and that now would be exactly what people wanted people like that would want that vip space that they can go into it's not something that's easy for a salon to do but i think if you've got a few guests that are nervous and they're high ticket guests yeah. don't do it for the you know the low ticket guests but the high ticket guest that is loyal and treasured and spends a lot of money maybe now is the time when we have to go do you know what it's worth doing that yeah to keep that lovely person and reassure them and once they come into the salon and they see all the things you are doing and you say well look if you do come in during the day when we're busy we can still do this we we'll protect you like this and we'll protect you like that they just need reassurance laura yeah um, definitely and, and, and we forget that the longer people stay at home i've got a dear friend mm-hmm that we're desperately trying to get her just to come around and sit in the garden for half an hour for a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Her husband's pulling his hair out because she hasn't been out and won't go out. And of course, the longer this goes on, the the worse it becomes. Yeah, It becomes a psychological issue. So anything we can do to help people overcome that, um, I think it's worth doing long term. 100%. So, So we replace the luxury with the, absolute mm-hmm. security so that people yeah. feel really really safe in your cell and don't start chipping away at those safety measures please don't do that definitely not and tony's come back to us as well which is fantastic and he said um, a lot of these mature clients that he's talking about they don't use the internet so i guess maybe a phone call might be better than sending them a video uh, like yes that. yeah there is yeah. a challenge there tony with those people because you you know i'm saying send them a video yeah how do you send them a video you yeah can't. exactly but he's also saying that they're asking for the hairdressers to come to their homes which obviously um if your setup is a salon then yeah because you, you, you can't you're bouldering into home hairdressing there yeah but i i think i think um I, if i think back to many many years ago when i had my sales i can remember a client phoning me up from a hospital she was in a private mm-hmm. hospital up near um uh launch cricket ground and she desperately wanted a hair doing and she said would you come out to my house uh, to the hospital to do it and i said well yeah I, I, i'm quite happy to come i said but you have to realize that there's a cost involved with that because mm-hmm. you know it's going to take me a, a, a time a period of time to get there and a period of time to get back mm-hmm. and a period of time. so i and she said that's fine that's not a problem and i think sometimes if you say to people look we could do that but obviously i'll have to charge you a different price Mm. sometimes you'd be amazed when people go do you know what it's not the money that's the issue so if it's a case because what you shouldn't do is sell yourself cheap don't sell yourself cheap yeah you've got to say well yeah i can do that i could even get you know i could even come out during the day but obviously if i'm out of my salon Mm. that's going to take me the time that i could do four other clients in and this is what i said to this this lady and i said it's going to take me you know four hours and in four hours i could generate this and she said well that's what i will pay you then yeah <laughs> so you 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 know we, we tend to think that people won't say yes to that but if you sit down with someone and say look i would love to do that but we you know we're jam-packed at the moment and, and actually at the moment we need all the income we can get and i could generate this you'd never know someone could go do you know what i'll pay you that tiny yeah just come out to me that's um fantastic. there has to be a way to communicate with these people i absolutely get that there's a lot of old people actually it's not just young people we've been communicating with all of our members well i say all we thought we'd be communicating with all of our members via facebook and email god knows what else during lockdown Mm -hmm. we have two facebook pages one that's open to anybody one that's open to our members Mm -hmm. and yet we've still got people because we've totally changed the way we're delivering our education ongoing because of what we've gone through so we've totally reinvented our club and all our fees so and we sent all the information out to people and people are going, oh, I didn't get it. And so even the yeah, people that are connected, yeah, they're not connected. No. You, you still don't get them all. 
Definitely. And actually, we've had um, so Claire Sawford, she's um, jumped in. And thank you very much, Claire. She said that she's um, got a senior Tuesdays for vulnerable people only. So yeah. that's clearly working quite well for her, which is fantastic. The, the only thing I would say there, Claire, in that, um, and, and some people will mm -hmm. uh, agree with me and disagree, and there's no right or wrong with this. Yes. Yeah. If you've got a senior Tuesday, I personally don't feel now that it has to be at a different price. Yeah. You know, the way we've often had the uh, the OAP day, which I, I and now because of my age, I go into when I have my hair done, they ask me now if I'm a pensioner, which, of course, technically a guy am at 68. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I'm still working, so I don't need the discount. But yeah. and, and there's part of me that goes. Well, I don't want the discount. And I sometimes <laughs> think that you can have a scene, you could have that period of time for those people that are scared, but it doesn't have to be at a reduced price. No. And is that and partly is about that, branding as well, Ken? Sorry? Is that is part of this about how you brand it? Well, uh, what you what, what you brand the day, whether yeah. you brand it as, a, a, as an OAP day. Yeah, or, yeah that yeah. expression, I really don't, I, I hate the fact that I'm now an OAP. <laughs> Well, apart from the fact that I get the bus pass on, you know, the tube pass into London for free. Just, so I I'm love just going to say, before you carry on, I'm just going to say thank you, Marion, for tuning in. She's just said, love listening to you. You talk so much sense, but she's got to go back to her clients now. Oh, well, <laughs> so, you can catch you, up Marianne. later, Marion. Thank you for <laughs> popping in. Uh, yeah, so I love some of the benefits that I get of being old, but I don't like being old. Um, but I, I sometimes think we, we think that everyone wants a deal, and they don't. And actually, one thing I, I was going to say, well, as we come out of this and, and people might jump in on this is what we've said to sounds most of our sounds is all the discounts that you were doing put them on the shelf yeah any deals you were doing before lockdown just put them on the shelf yeah. and then before you introduce any of them say to yourself why am i doing that and does it make me money i yeah. see so many sounds i've worked with so many sounds over the last few years and got them to totally get rid of their discounts because they don't need them they thought they did but they don't and now is the perfect time to go do you know what on the shelf fantastic and actually louise fresher she's just said she's scrapped senior discounts because of the demographic of where we are and an awful lot of our clients are seniors so it wasn't viable anymore to have no. and actually the, the yeah. that market is becoming bigger yeah because, <laughs> because people are living longer um and the silver as we said the silver pound is now mm. larger so the pensioners nowadays tend to be more affluent when i say that there's always going to be a sector of the market this this sounds elitist there's always going to be a sector of the market that doesn't have a lot of money mm. and there will always be a sector of the market that caters for that and that's absolutely fine yeah but you have to choose where you go in that market because when you're in that market what you can deliver has a lid on it because of the the income that you've got potentially mm -hmm. coming in so you have to decide where you sit in the marketplace and there's no right or wrong to this let's be honest you can be a waitrose or an audi yeah you know you can be hugo boss or you can be primark they are both absolutely valid business models but you can't you, you know hugo if hugo boss sells a pair of trousers for 10 quid nobody wants them no yeah I don't want to, you know, you don't want to buy a, a, a Hugo Boss pair of trousers for 10 mm. well, you If you went in the shop and saw them, you go, that's not right. Uh, so there's, there's you question a, it, wouldn't you? Yeah, there's a there is a branding thing there. Lord. Mm. People don't expect to get that sort of quality at that price. And when they yeah. do, they question it. Yeah. And if you bring that quality down to that price, mm. it's really hard to push it back up because yeah. you get the people that normally buy at that price. That's why when, um, if, if people get involved with the, uh, the you know, the, the big discounts, the vouchers and offers and yeah. all those sort of things, and I won't go into the brands of those companies, and they suddenly sell a set of highlights that was 150 pounds for 50 pounds. Mm. The 50 pound customer is not a 150 pound customer. No, yeah. So these companies go, well, you can convert them. You can't, they're oh, a different brand. Yeah. They're a different customer. So either go for that market or go for that market. Yeah. Don't you, you get into both, you get in a mess. And we've seen companies do it. We've seen brands try and do it, try and go all up, and they and it always messes them up. Mm. People go, well, what are you? You know. 
Exactly. And you want that loyalty, don't you? You want the consumer that will stay with you regardless of the price because they want to be with you. Elizabeth Barker, it's lovely to have you tuning in with us. Um, She's saying, what about freelancers at this time? Um, She's a mobile um, hairdresser and she has a home salon and she's had lots of new clients that don't want to return to salons. Yeah, I get that. I mean, freelancers... uh... Well, they don't want to return to sounds because they're not feeling safe in a sound. So they go to, um, sorry, what did you say the young lady's name again? It's Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah. It sounds like Elizabeth has got a sound in her home. Did she say that? Yeah, she's a home home hairdresser, she said. Uh, oh, no, she's mobile. She's mobile. Oh, she's mobile. Okay. Yeah. So obviously what you're talking about there is people feel safe in their home. Yeah. So we've got to make them feel safe in our environment. Now, they feel safe in their home because they're on their own. Uh, there's only the hairdresser coming in so somehow we've got to create that safety in a salon and the salons that I know salons weren't obliged to put screens between customers but some of the salons I've seen that have done it and done it well done it professionally done it beautifully I've seen salons that have done it and the screens have got branding on and they look lovely so they've created these individual booths someone like that would feel safer in that sort of environment than in an open salon. Mm. Uh, and that's maybe where, um, you know, Elizabeth is going to gain out of it at the moment. Um, we, you know, as, a, as an organisation, 365 mm-hmm. doesn't work with freelance hairdressers. It's not because we've got anything against them. It's just because our business systems are irrelevant to them yeah. because they don't have teams that they, they work with. But I think sometimes we have to create the, got to try and create the environment of a home hairdresser mm-hmm. in a salon and that's uh that's always difficult um and it also depends why people are paying uh, what what people are paying for the home hairdresser and i won't get into that with elizabeth because it's not fair no, yeah. um, because um you know it's it, if people are going to a home hairdresser for, for a price issue then it's a different matter and actually tony has come back again he's the one who's had these mature clients who were scared to come back and he said that they have started doing some clients in their own homes at an extra cost. So yes. that's what you were talking about. Uh, it is because I think, I think what you, by doing that, you're not devaluing your brand. Mm. Uh, I think, um, I think if, if, if customers understand that you're prepared to go that extra mile, but yeah. there's a cost, um, then, then I, I don't think that harms your brand. I think if you went to their homes and did the haircuts for exactly the same price as you did it in the salon, then that affects your brand. Yeah, and then it'll become their choice whether they do feel comfortable to come back yes, into the salon correct. and pay, pay the yep. normal price for it again. Claire came back. She's the one who still has the um, Senior Tuesdays, and she said it's um, one of her busiest days um, in the salon, and they do feel safe and secure, so it's her vulnerable-only day. Yeah. And they pay a PPE surcharge and everything, and they haven't grumbled, and she says, thank you very much, Ken. Um Caroline Flynn has said, we have just started charging for time. Some clients get it and some don't. Um, She's worried she will lose clients through this as some are paying more. Do you think this is the way forward? So she's now charging for time. I have, um, I've made it quite quite public that I am a fan of Mm. charging by time. Uh, But that's only because when salons charge by time, they realize the cost involved in delivering the service so it's a case of i think you can you can still charge in the traditional way by the service but you should still be looking at the time it takes to deliver the service to create your price does that make sense because yeah. really there should be no difference between charging by time and charging by the service yeah. the, mere, the, 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 the difference is that in the past we haven't created prices in the first place looking at the amount of time in the product and all the things that go into delivering the service. <clears throat> now, when we start looking at charging by the hour, we have to look at those things. Yeah. So really there should be no difference in it. Mm. But yeah. of course, when you change from one to the other, um, there is always a transition period. And, and although I'm a great fan of charging by the hour, and there's some very, very successful sounds out there that I love the way they operate the charge by the hour, when our members want to change, um, I ask them to do it very carefully um, because you can destroy your business by doing it. You can alienate people. But if you've charged correctly for your services in the past, 
i.e. a service that took you three hours, you worked out what it was going to cost you. It should be easy to change. But of course, we yeah. don't. We, we, we go, what do we charge for it? Oh, you know, we, we make up these prices based upon no logic whatsoever. And then when we start to apply logic to it, we go, oh, oh, now what do we do? Because, <laughs> because, oh, it's a is whole thing. Is there a real education piece in terms of your clients and really sort of explaining it to them and that kind of helping with that transition? Is that something that maybe might help Caroline? Well, there is. And I think, and I also think it depends how you've run your business in the past. The salons that I see that are um, doing charging by the hour really successfully are the ones whereby, so Lloyd, you come to me and, and I'm yours for three hours so i do everything i don't go off and do someone else in between and obviously at and the that, moment that's the way it has to be isn't it so yes yeah so, so charging service. by the hour yeah. that, and those sales have been doing it yeah. for, for years but but that customer is buying my time and they appreciate that they're buying my time and i don't run off and do someone else mm. i'm there for them I, you know they they know that i'm there for them um and and if you do it like that it, it works perfectly i think it's mm. if you try and charge by the hour but you're not there. It's like a builder comes around to your house and he says, I'm going to charge you for a day. <clears throat> and he shows up late and he leaves early and he disappears for lunch. And you go, well, you've only been here three hours yeah. and you've charged me for a day. Mm. So it's, it's how you work this. That's, uh, that's the challenge. I, I am a fan of charge of charging by the hour, but it's not something you can change too easily. I have had some salons that during lockdown, we have been i spend a lot of time with our members making them analyze what they charge for a service and what's happened over that period of time is people have gone we're going to charge by the hour because they've seen the logic in charging by the hour yeah that makes sense um nhs discounts is cropping up ken we've got rosie who said what do you think to say um what do you think the best thing to say to people who ask for an nhs discount she also says you don't look your age. Compliment there as well, Ken. Very kind then, of you. <laughs> and then Megan has also said thoughts on an NHS discount. So um, it's a few people asking about that one. Okay, it's a uh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Mm. Um, because I'm saying do away with your discounts. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, we we owe so much to these people mm -hmm. that possibly don't earn well probably definitely don't earn anywhere near what they should earn no. and obviously we know no and i think if you pay rise recently and yeah, yeah i think yeah. if you choose to offer an nh discount you do it from here mm. it doesn't come from here yeah um, it comes from here and 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 i would never disagree with anybody that wanted to do an nhs discount because yeah. i think at the moment we owe those people so so much mm. Um, and therefore, uh, yeah, that I, I, I've got to say, you know, I, I'm not going to give you a business decision on that mm -hmm. because yeah. my business head goes, uh, are, are discounts growing your business? That's another day, another dollar. Yeah. But this isn't about that. This is about, do we feel we are indebted to those people? Yes, we are. And, and if you don't want to give them a discount, give them value in other ways. Give them products, give them shampoos and conditioners to, we can give people extra value um that doesn't necessarily uh cost the business the same does that make sense yeah. so i can either give you 10 pounds off or i can give you a product that's worth mm -hmm. 15 pounds or i can give you a product that's worth 10, 10 pounds but it's mm -hmm. only cost me six um so you can do it in different ways and i'm not saying do either of those but i'm saying what i'm saying is yes if emotionally you want to give back to the nhs you should i'm certainly yeah. not going to disagree with that one the only challenge with it is when do you stop it that's do you know what that's what was going through my head there ken do you put a cut off on it or how would that work i mean it's i don't know it? because <laughs> we are I, living I, in the I, unknown I, aren't we yeah because you know the, we could you know we're already talking in the papers today about yeah. second waves and spikes and god knows what we could be indebted to these people forever and actually mm -hmm. They should just get the money they deserve so that they, they can should, afford yeah. To, yeah. to come to hairdressing. Yeah. But but so if you thank them in another way, then by all means. But yeah. I mean, could, it be, could, too... it be, um, could it be giving them a treatment at the back wash or something Absolutely. like that? You know, Absolutely. A, a head, 
a head massage treatment with a mask or something something Correct. a different way of you know make them feel special yeah. send them yeah. home with the products they need to take care of their home their hair yeah. you know give them a bottle of shampoo and a conditioner and a treatment mm -hmm. do whatever you feel you want to do i'm not gonna i'm certainly not going to decry that one that would be i'd be hung drawn and quartered we owe so much to these people i mean i've been yeah. very lucky no one close to me has 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 had the virus but but i know of people that have and mm. jesus it, uh, it's just unbelievable and when you see some of the video footage of what the conditions these guys have worked under mm. and we're moaning about wearing visors for know, goodness sake yeah, yeah. hairdressers moaning about visors need mm. to get a life and look at the nhs mm -hmm. and what they've had to do to save lives and i don't mean that nastily i just mean you know sometimes when we go oh I don't like wearing a visor you think these people have gone through hell to save people's lives so if you want to give them something by all means do it with my blessing fantastic well we are getting close to the end um ken and as always we've kind of got sidetracked and we've had loads of people jumping in with questions which has been fantastic but i guess um just to wrap up if you were going to give people your sort of tips for the next few months if they're starting to worry about the fact that they are getting these holes in their calendar and they want to make sure they keep their loyal clients coming back for more as well as trying to get new clients behind the within the chair what would sort of be your tips for the next couple of months as things evolve from getting rid of that backlog and moving to okay, that next there's, stage there's there's two things the first thing hairdressers don't like healing and that is if you didn't spend during that 15 weeks that we were shut down if you didn't spend time understanding the numbers of your business and therefore the future numbers of your business because there's many people you and i were talking about this before we went mm. on air yeah. people have taken out loans to repay loans to repay loans mm. that is going to come back and absolutely bite you in the bum so if you've not planned that and you've stuck your head in the sand get out of the sand the other thing i would say is rebooking at the moment clients are happily rebooking mm -hmm. because they have been scared by the fact they couldn't get an appointment so when you ask them to rebook they will book that will go that will disappear okay. eventually okay so you need to work on a culture in your salon and we actually coach salons in 365 we give them uh, even a script to use for mm -hmm. rebooking because rebooking is a process it's a process and it becomes part of your culture you know, and we've got salons at the moment that have got 85, 90% rebooking. But we're also seeing salons that are going, oh, I had 85 last week, but it's now 80 this week. And, and it will gradually change. So you must work on a culture of rebooking with all of your team. All of your team have to be empowered with a script to make them feel confident to rebook. Do you think, now, is it a conversation to have before the end of the appointment? Is it a conversation to have during the appointment or uh, it, start it, it, it doesn't matter. You just need to have a yep. process mm. because I tell you what most hairdressers do. They say, Laura, um, would you like to rebook or do you want to check with your husband, check with the kids, check with the cat, check with the dog, mm. see what you like, check with the dog. Oh, give us a call. And then it's just then kind of giving say, them a way out. <laughs> correct. We've given them yeah. eight reasons why not to rebook. And then yeah. we go, well, I asked them. You've yeah. got, you need to change that. And I, and I won't get into how you script it because that's, you know, something we coach in 365. But it has to become a culture that every team member in your salon is used to because when we get through this, we'll be going back to the time when, you know, a stylist books their own uh, next appointment. Mm -hmm. A receptionist does it. An assistant does it. Um, as, you know, lots of people. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to be <clears throat> systemized into a rebooking culture, just like a dentist is. Yeah. And that's and that's a that's a that's a mm -hmm. training session and a script and coaching your team but it yeah. has to be a process fantastic so from your point of view i think that's a great tip there ken in order to make sure that when the rush is over you're not just twiddling your thumbs and you've got empty chairs in your salon which nobody wants it's making sure you get those clients rebooked before they walk out the door yes and and also if if what you're doing at the moment is doing it's, it's not being creative because you're under pressure. You're missing a golden opportunity mm. um, because people need to be, they need to come back to a hairdresser and go, my God, I've missed that. Not just because yeah. my hair's now there instead of there. It's not as simple as that. Mm. You know, we talked about Jane, my partner and her saying, you know, there was no wow factor when I went to the salon. Nothing inspired me. 
people need mm. to come back into the cell and go thank god i have missed that experience not just going back going does my hair look better they need to go don't i feel better okay. psychologically yeah. do i feel better mm. that is a valuable part of my life and stylists have a wonderful opportunity to get creative now otherwise all we can do is we'll just churn out things and people yeah. go well that's fine i've had a haircut but you know i parted with all that money i paid for ppe and i just got a haircut and if yeah. all you're doing is haircuts mm. get so creative going, and and offering clients transformations that might well not take just one appointment it might take two or three and then Correct. keep them getting Correct. in and also be honest with clients uh, don't try and do things that aren't possible mm -hmm. don't try and fix problems that they've created that you can't fix easily yeah. and therefore create another problem mm -hmm. hairdressers are pleasers so naturally we go yeah yeah we can fix that yeah yeah we can fix that but you and i know that there are heads coming into sounds at the moment where the stars will look at and go my god what have you done what can, how can i fix that yeah you know what if you can't don't don't get involved with something that's going to make you look bad at the end of the day yeah because they believe we're musicians yeah and not musicians, magicians. Magicians. They, they believe we're magicians, and, and we we are, a, but only to a certain level. Mm. We can't create miracles. No, and if it can't, so if it can't be done in one appointment, then it can't be done. You need to be honest yeah. and explain, and yeah. charge the right prices for it. You know, we've got salons yeah. that are that are, you know they normally charge fifty quid for regrowth, and they're charging fifty quid for regrowth. Mm. But the regrowth isn't that; it's that. Yeah. You know, and and there's a totally different process with doing that. There's more product, more time, application skills are different. Uh, so you have to make sure that you charge for those things. But that's back to what we were saying earlier on, Laura, about do salons charge the right amounts mm. for the services they deliver? Definitely. And like we were talking about in terms of charging for time um, as well as just for the service. Correct. And Caroline has just come in and said um, she's been taking deposits when rebooking, but she thinks this is putting the team off of doing the rebooking well that's a team issue that you need to deal with um and team shouldn't be concerned about that I'll, I'll tell you a story one of our members found that they were getting no shows that they'd had some no shows and, and restaurants have been absolutely slaughtered by customers not showing up which i think is disgraceful it really is yeah that you should book a restaurant and they're not show up yeah. so i know a son that's taking a 25 pound 25 pound deposit for every haircut 50 pound deposit for every chemical services and their customers have just said, yep, that's fine. Now, okay, stylists always think there's a negative to something. Let's think about this. If I book your appointment and I take a deposit from you, if you intend to come to that appointment, why would you not be happy to leave a deposit? Yeah. So the good guys will be happy for mm -hmm. you to take a deposit, even if it's not as big as mm -hmm. the ones that I just said to you. But you cannot afford to have no shows. Yeah. And if I'm a customer and I, I booked for a restaurant recently and I, I said to them, do you want a deposit or a credit card? And they said, no, it's fine. And I thought, well, you should. You should be. And take a deposit. Ex or... Expensive luxury restaurants have always Correct. offered a deposit, haven't they? Correct. <laughs> they understand and... that that time is money. Yeah. And but but it's just like hairdressers are scared of putting the price up. Hairdressers are scared of charging. Hairdressers don't value themselves. Turn around to those stylists and say, well, okay, if these customers don't come, I won't be able to pay you. Yeah. Now, as soon as, the, as soon as the stylist understands that if that customer doesn't show, it's going to hurt my pocket, then they'll start taking the deposits. Yeah. Um, uh, but hairdressers don't still, to this day, don't understand, A, their value, and B, the effect of a no-show customer has on their pockets. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, that's how stylists earn their money. Mm. Um, so, so I, I, I think it, you need to coach your team to go. Do you know what? This is just this is this makes sense. Do you want to have a day where your clients don't show up and therefore you don't earn money? You got to remember, stylists have just been stylists have just had fifteen weeks and been paid to sit at home. Yeah. So they've lost the connection between serving customers and income. And at the moment, they're earning good money because they're jam-packed. That won't last. No, exactly. And Donna, Donna Bourne has just um, messaged and said... Is that um, Bourne or Borg? Bourne. Do you know oh, right, okay. Bourne? Well, she says um, she's had the benefit of training and working within a 365 salon yeah. for 12 years. 
So she's been able to bring the knowledge into her own business. She's now an at-home salon on a one-to-one -one basis and all of her clients rebook. So um, I love it. I love, a lot through that. I love the fact that, okay, you know, I've been a member of 365 for 25, 26 years when I had my salons and the club's been going for 37 mm. years, whatever. I love the fact that so many people go, do you know what? I worked in a 365 salon. Mm. I learned from a th whatever. 365 as a club has touched so many hairdressers' lives in their careers. And that's why I love being part of this fabulous club that I'm now involved with. I love it. Fantastic. So thank you, Donna, for sharing that. I'm glad you've benefited from the wisdom of 365. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean the wisdom of me, I mean the club. We've got such resources of information that have been built up over the years. Um, that It's amazing. I love what we do. Definitely. And we really appreciate the fact, Ken, that you've given up your time again to share those words of wisdom with us and with our um, readers and our audience. Uh, it's, a it's a pleasure. I, 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 I love our industry. And anyone that knows me, you know, I, as I said to you earlier on, I, I should be laying on a beach somewhere. I should have retired. But I love our industry. I'm passionate about it. And it's always hurt me that hairdressers don't value themselves. It's always hurt me that hairdressers don't earn as much money as they could earn. And it hurts me that a stylist is, is, is worried about raising their price and he's worried about asking for a deposit. That hurts me because that wouldn't be the same from a surgeon or, uh -oh. uh, you know, anybody else. Yeah. And, and I find that sad. And that's why I'm still as passionate today about what I do as, as I've always been. And that's why I love what we do and what we have the opportunity to do. Um, we have to start believing in ourselves as an industry, in our value. And this was the perfect opportunity. Customers now realise how valuable we are to them and how they feel. If a hairdresser hasn't gone back into the workplace and gone, OK, guys, now, here I am. You've yeah. missed me. And this is what I want. Appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've missed a golden opportunity. Yeah. And so all those people are going, oh, we'll have to do this and we'll have to do that. And we'll have to do that. And don't go stand big and proud and go, I am. I am worth. It's the only thing I love about loyal because I'm worth it. Yes. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great, <laughs> it's a slogan great ever. Slogan. I know. Definitely. It's a fantastic slogan. Um, and like you say, don't shy away. Your clients are coming to you because they love what you do. And it's Correct. about having that confidence, even if they do shy, they're not entirely happy with the change you're making. It's about selling it to them and making sure yeah. they come back. And uh, th it's that, that we're going right back to the beginning. Clients yeah, have got to yeah. face real safe. Mm -hmm. Um, Jane was in the supermarket the other day and she said, you know, you're going into shops now where we're supposed to wear masks. Some people aren't, some people are. Yeah. But I don't understand why are these people just yeah. not going, do you know what? We're just going to do it. Yeah. It's not about me. It's about other people. Mm. I am wearing a mask to make you feel safe. Yeah. Not me, mm. you. Stop being selfish. Exactly. And I guess, I mean, Supermarkets is a prime example, isn't it? Because some Correct. supermarkets have made that decision. They're not going to force people to wear masks, yeah. which is a risk because they will lose clients who do appreciate that safety. Well, they ID. will because because Jane said, oh, yeah. I didn't feel I didn't feel comfortable. So, OK, she's not at the point where she's going to change mm -hmm. supermarkets. But I'll tell you what she did said. She said, will you come with me so we can get in and out quicker? Yeah. And you think, well, that's, that's not an experience at all. I mean, it's not fun no. anyway, is it? But that's an even we've got to stop think We've got to stop being selfish in this whole thing. A lot of these things we're being asked to do is to protect mm. other people. Um, so stop thinking about yourself mm -hmm. and think about other people. And yeah. that's the that's the, the salon experience. Mm. Think about how other people feel. Make them feel safe. Fantastic. I think that's a great way to end it, Ken. So it's selling that safety and hygiene message. True. Making sure you get those clients rebooked as soon as they, um, before they leave, um, walk out through the door feeling amazing. Um, and hopefully you won't have too many empty slots in the schedule. And training the team to ensure they understand that, you know, an empty slot is not making them any money. And it's it's very easy in this time where we're busy to forget about your team. Mm. Uh, you've got to make them feel safe as well. Uh, but don't forget, your team need constant support. Those of you that know how Apple work, in an Apple store, they educate their team every day before they open. Mm -hmm. Education every single day. Salons uh, are not very good at educating their team on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And when they're busy, they that's the first thing to go. Done. Get, grab your team together for half an hour. Reassure them, coach them, help them deal with their queries. They're all over the place at the moment. 
Uh, they yeah. need your support as much as the customer. They need to feel safe as well. Um, just, just help other people. Definitely. I think that's great advice, Ken. And thank you so much again. We've had more amazing feedback. Natalie has said, Ken is amazing. You've been um, her rock. So that's fantastic. That was from Natalie Ward. Jan Fudge. Has thank said, I you, love, Natalie. I love the 365 philosophy. I've used it even though I only had a few years in a salon with it. So it stayed with her for a long time. So thank you very much, Jan. Um, lots of love. Debbie Morris said, love this. Thank you so much, Ken. So lots of love in the room for you as always. Oh, kisses to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you so much for tuning in and to Ken for giving up his time once again to share these words of wisdom. It's a and we, we hope that you all keep going strong and getting those clients back in the salon regularly so there's no empty slots. Brilliant. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Take care. Goodbye, Take everybody. Care.